What's up YouTube, Lone Star Road Warrior here, uh, giving you a basic overview of a 2015 Harley Davidson Electra Ultra Classic. I've owned this bike for about 14 months now and I've had no issues with it to date. Some of the highlights of the bike is that it has cruise control on the left side with the touch to talk feature, kind of like a Siri on the iPhone. It uh, also has the radio controls on the left and right side, which is very nice. You don't have to take your hands off the handlebars while riding. Uh, I've done some upgrades to it. I've put this backrest on from Harley, and I've also put highway pegs on it, also from Harley, and they say Harley Davidson on the foot peg. Uh, besides that, the bike has slip-on Screaming Eagle exhaust, which sound great. But besides that, the bike is stock. I don't have a tuner on it. It doesn't have to have to mark it air intake on it and for what this bike is which is a cruiser it is plenty powerful for what it needs to do it goes on the highway just fine it will maintain 70 75 miles an hour no problem uh, you just set the cruise control and the bike takes it from there I recently just took the bike on a 400 mile ride and as you can tell the windscreen and fairing got pretty buggy uh, the nickname for this bike is bug slayer the, uh, some of the drawbacks about the bike is that it does create a good amount of heat when you're on a hot day. Uh, yesterday was about 102 degrees according to the uh, thermostat or temperature reader on the gauge. And I, I was noticing I was getting quite a bit of heat from this particular area. What is in this area is you got the two into one back into two if you look under there you see it goes out which gives you the true dual out the sides or the back um this does create a good amount of heat right here especially if you're sitting in traffic i do have the bike uh set to that when it's idling or it's called parade mode that when i'm idling in traffic or on a stoplight it does shut off the rear cylinder and just the front cylinder fires. It's pretty noticeable when the bike does that. It becomes a single thumper. And you feel it and you hear it and you smell it because it enriches the fuel mixture to try to cool itself down. Uh, I did not have that enabled for the longest time and I just recently turned it on and it does make a world of difference doing that. I recommend doing it no matter what part you live in. If it's a cold day, the bike won't do it and if it's a hot day the bike will do it and it'll help save the heads if you don't do it uh, i've had some issues that i would get going again and i could hear the rear cylinder start pinging and i would pull off to the side and let it cool down for about a half hour uh, but since i enabled it it is fairly easy or it stays fairly cool even in traffic in a hundred plus degree day uh, i do have a passenger that rides with me quite frequently she has little to no complaints about the back seat. Uh, if you look back here, it has the rear passenger controls. The way that works, if, if we are both hooked up to the bike and we're playing music through the headset, she can volume up or volume down on her headset depending on how loud she wants it or they want it. Uh, the way I have my headset set up right now, is that I have it with a Cena wireless. I don't have any issues with that. She does get a good amount of wind. This is the stock windshield on it, and it hits her right at chin level, and it hits me at the top of my head, and I'm five foot 11, six foot on a good day. So I will be investing in a different windshield. Uh, as long as we're up front of the bike, the, the headlight and these two Driving lights or fog lights, depending on what you want to call them, are amazing. This is the Daymaker headlight, the LED headlight, and at night it lights up the road perfectly, especially with those two extra lights on. I have a buddy that has a 2017 Street Glide, and when he turned on his light, it was kind of bright, and then I turned on mine and it overpowered his uh, overwhelmingly to the point that it didn't even look like his was on. So. If you were looking to upgrade a headlight, I definitely recommend the Daymaker LED headlights. These wind deflectors, as you can tell, they're easy to move. Um, what's cool about this, these were designed in Project Rushmore 
to work with the new jackets and if you have the fairing open like that the air will come through it will hit your jacket go through a vent and then leave your body or leave the jacket and it cools you down quite well and I've ridden this bike in 22 degree weather and with that fairing closed and this inner fairing closed you get not a lot of wind hitting you you get a little wind passing right through here which is hitting your knee and your thigh but besides that you get next to no wind this vent up here all those cool idea is really not very useful i've tried it turning it on and off on the highway and i don't notice the difference if you look right there it's open you press this and it shuts and it's supposed to deflect all the air up and away and when it's closed it's supposed to have the air come through and hit you it really doesn't you feel the air coming up both on both sides of the windscreen instead of one side so even though it's a cool looking feature i don't notice much when it's open or closed the main vents that I feel is definitely this fairing vent and this leg vent. And with this leg vent closed when it was 20 degrees out, uh, I'll be cruising down the highway for probably about 30 minutes. And all of a sudden, the inside of my pant leg will start getting warm and the engine will actually keep me warm. Like, that's one of the plus sides to the heat that it produces. Uh, I will be, it does come with the stock oil cooler, which is useful when the bike is moving but when the bike is standing still it's not doing much because there's no fan on it and it's just hit the highway and let the open road cool it down um, this trunk space in the back is huge i can fit two full face helmets or two backpacks or a mini cooler full of water and it comes with a decent toolkit as well the, this toolkit is quite useful i had to use it once i killed the battery at a gas station one time and i was able to take off the seat and the saddlebags pop off pretty easily they don't require any tools which was a nice new feature that they incorporated but there's a bolt right there for the strap and then there's one back over here and you remove the seat and that allows you access to the battery and the controls uh, to remove the saddlebags it's pretty easy you got these two tabs here you just twist them and the bags will come right off see it's separated and I just lift it straight out and the bag is off so that's really nice because when I clean it I like to clean behind there and it just makes it that much easier so put them back on it's just reverse the process and snap it shut the since I have the air cooled version and I don't have the radiator I have a nice little storage compartment right here and I always put my wallet in there so I'm not sitting on it and uh, that's a very nice little feature uh, the seat on this thing is quite comfortable for a stock seat I could go about five hours on it before my butt starts to annoy me but by the time that is I'm shifting around I'm kind of dancing on the bike putting my feet on the highway pegs the regular pegs or sometimes the passenger pegs kind of like a sport bike take some pressure off at night this touring pack lights up really nice got all nice LED lights brake lights in there they have LED running lights under there and the red on black always looks good the only downside that I don't like about the rear end is that tail light right there I think that's an ugly looking tail light they could have probably cleaned that up a little better kind of like do like a street guard one with just the back of the two lights on each side but uh, this being a Harley they're pretty easy to swap out and then there's plenty of options out there for you and another non LED light is the turn signals again not a big deal easy to change this does have that linked ABS system which means that if you slam on the rear brake or the front brake to the point that they're locking up the bike will automatically start working front and rear brakes with the ABS system to stop it completely uh, on my road trip yesterday I did have to test that somebody did pull out in front of me and I slammed on the brakes and it's like somebody threw an anchor over the side the bike stopped very quick it uh, surprisingly quick very controlled and I have no issues the way that works my older bike which was a v-rod had the ABS system on it but it wasn't the linked ABS and if I would have stabbed the rear brake it would lock up and then completely let go of the brake and then lock up again but that time took about four to five seconds so you would have no braking 
for four to five seconds and it was very scary. This one's much quicker, much faster, much more controllable, and much more predictable, which inspires confidence. Uh, another confidence thing about this bike is the turning ability of it. Even though it is a big touring cruising bike, it's still fun in the twisties. You can still uh, rip it through the turns in a fun manner without setting any land speed records, but you can definitely scrape the floor plagues on it with confidence and keep riding. And I've had it going about five miles an hour. It gets really stable. It's really easy to ride. It's just the slow speed stuff. They start to feel its weight. Uh, another thing about the bike that uh, is old school Harley is that at idle, when it's not on the parade mode, so when it's firing on both cylinders, it does shake a lot. And I'm noticing the new bike, the 107, shakes significantly less uh, due to my friend's bike. I washed his hands and my hands probably move like a full inch in either direction. His probably only move a half inch. Again, not a big deal on the highway. It's buttery smooth, plenty of power. It's got a great sound. They do hold their value well. This infotainment system, the new Harley Boom system, is a great system, especially now that I have the Cena hook up to it. I'm able to use the full uh, ability of it, and ever since I added that, it has been a great system. The sound is crystal clear on the highway, and it's the volume adjust to your speed so you don't have to constantly turn it up and down when you're in traffic it just does it automatically it kicks in about 10 miles an hour uh, the fuel range on this i get about 230 miles to a tank and it's a six gallon tank uh, it takes premium always make sure to put premium in them what is neat about this bike is that on the left side of the bike if you look right there you have a airport and what that is it's a air suspension system that and when you have a passenger on you can firm it up a little bit so you don't bottom out over the bumps so much uh, I haven't tested that yet I'm probably gonna put about five to ten pounds of pressure in it when she rides with me again and see if that helps smooth it out because right now there is no air in there and it rides comfortably but as soon as you get on a rough road or a pothole road uh, it starts bottoming out fairly quick with both of us on it that is my review of a 2015 Harley Davidson Electro Ultra Classic. Uh, feel free to post comments or questions below.